What's up guys, thank you for tuning into this channel. I'm your host, Will Smith. And today we have a special guest from one of my favorite brands, which Reserve. Sergio, could you please introduce yourself to the lovely fans at home? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for, for having me. Um, I've been excited to be on your show. It's been a couple of months in the making, so yes, yes. finally happy to be on here. Um, yeah, I'm Sergio Serna, brand ambassador for Woodford Reserve in the Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota territory. Mm -hmm. um, I reside here in Chicago, though, and I've been with the brand for a um, little over a year and a half. Nice, nice, nice. And, you know, of course, we have Wood for Reserve, you know, Kentucky made. You know, I'm really excited to really talk about this. So, um, guys, let's get straight into it. Um, so, Sergio, please tell us about the history. You know, everyone looks at the presentation. It's a beautiful bottle, um, kind of, what is it, brown, amber, you know? Both, yeah, absolutely. Amber. Yeah, there you go. Be beautiful presentation, I, and it tastes just as good as how it looks. So, you know, please tell us about the, the history, something the fans don't know about. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Woodford Reserve launched in 1996, which when I first started working for the company, I thought that Woodford Reserve had been around for, you know, yeah. hundreds of years, exactly. just because it's such a, a popular spirit and it has such a loyal fan base that I was shocked when I heard it was only, you know, 27 years old. So um, that being said, the distillery in which Woodford Reserve is made has been on site since 1812, mm. making it one of the oldest operating whiskey distilleries in the country. Okay. And is it called Woodford Distillery? Like what's the, is that it, its own? Yeah, it's called the Woodford Reserve Distillery. Okay. Um, prior to that, it was called the Lebro and Grand Distillery. And then prior to that, it was actually called the Oscar Pepper Distillery. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so the distillery's been in the same location for 111 years. Um, however, Woodford Reserve has only been around since 1996. Okay, okay. And, um, you know, I guess looking at this beautiful bottle selected by master distiller you know you have the person i'm guessing who actually distilled or absolutely blended yeah. this this up Damn, so nice. all these bottles um and some of the ones that you still see at your retail store will say the name chris morris who was our master distiller mm -hmm. but as of uh, a couple of months ago he somewhat retired and wow. our uh, assistant master distiller, Elizabeth McCall, now has taken over the role. Nice. So you'll, you'll start seeing her name on, on the bottles moving forward. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, give a shout out to Elizabeth, but thank you, Chris, for your service. Thank you. So yeah, so, you know, love to get into it. Yeah, let's, let's um, pour some, some whiskey. I'm gonna try my pour, you know, usually, I get the pour, but you know, I'll be the bartender because I love bartending. Absolutely. It's one of the uh, greatest culinary professions in, in not only the US, but like all over the world. Oh, and we're starting with my favorite one, the bourbon whiskey. Oh, these two actually, my, my, my love them, but please let's let's talk about the flavors. Um, yeah, of course. You know, let's, let's get into it and I'll show how that looks. Yeah. So, you know, like I mentioned in 1996, uh, Woodford Reserve was launched and the Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey was the first product that was ever made at the distillery. Mm -hmm. And actually it was the only product for the first 15 years of the company's existence that was being made. Mm -hmm. So from 1996 to 2011, this was the only product that, that was being made. Wow. By chance, do you have a bottle that's been around that long is that is um i don't think so we don't that, we don't have like whiskey's aging in barrel for too long of a time yeah uh simply because with the climate that's in kentucky you start to lose a lot of the whiskey if you keep it around for let's say 20 some years so okay i don't think there is a bottle i mean there might be you know in the secondary tertiary market but i haven't seen one yeah it's interesting like how science in, in the location that you uh, brew and distill, like it has uh, a significant meaning to the actual alcohol. Yeah, I mean, it's a true, true art form, you know. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people can uh, think of alcohol as a way to, uh, you know, just imbibe and, you know, start to feel a little bit loose. But yeah, in reality, it's an actual art form. Like, you know, you have to know your, your, your science, as, as you said, because otherwise you can, make bad products so. yeah yeah so well, let's get into our first little it. pour Cheers. 10 out of 10 10 out of 10. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's gorgeous whiskey so you know in underneath each bottle we have um, a flavor wheel which just kind of gives you like an idea of like certain flavor profile certain flavor characteristics that you would pick up mm -hmm. 
And with Woodford Reserve, there's over 200 detectable compounds. And with our Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, it is the most balanced American whiskey in the market. And what I mean by that is that out of all those detectable flavors that you see, that you, that you can taste, mm -hmm. they are all very well um, represented meaning there's not necessarily one flavor profile that kind of like lingers longer than the other or one that falls off um, first. Okay. So, you know, first thing I hear when people talk about Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon is that, you know, they use the common word, it's really smooth. But what I think of that word is that you get all of these beautiful flavors floating around on your tongue mm -hmm. and then they all kind of like disappear at the same time, you know, not necessarily leaving like a certain flavor and, but to that point, being out of balance is not a bad thing. So as we get to our other whiskeys, I'll talk about them being out of balance by design. Yeah. But our Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey is the most balanced uh, American whiskey out there. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. And this has been my go-to, so you want to give me something. Um, yeah, let's get into the next one. Next, we're going to taste our Double Oak Expression. So as I mentioned, from 1996 to 2011, the Kentucky Straight Bourbon was the only thing we made. Then came 2011 and we launched the Double Oak Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Now, essentially what our Double Oak is, is our bourbon aged two times. So once our Kentucky Straight Bourbon whiskey is fully matured, which is anywhere from five to seven years, mm -hmm. we will then transfer it over into another brand new American oak barrel. However, this second barrel is heavily toasted on the inside, which is actually four times heavier toasting than our regular barrels. Okay. So for our regular barrels, we use a 10 minute toast and then a 35 second char. For the double oak second barrel, we do a heavy 40 minute toast and just a quick five second char on there. Mm. Now, what that heavy, heavily toasted second barrel does, not only does it add a darker complexion to it, mm -hmm. but it releases a lot of those natural sugars that are in the wood. So ideally, you know, once we pour this and we taste it out, ideally with this one, um, you pick up a little bit more of like a sweet aromatic finish to it because of that second barrel aging and that heavily toasted arrow. And when I taste it before, I, I do taste, like you said, that sweetness. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's got a little hint of, I don't know if it's vanilla, but it's something sweet. Yeah, absolutely, there. for sure. And let's go back to what I said earlier about um, being out of balance is not a bad thing. It's, yeah. it's by design. Yeah. We wanted to create something that would highlight a little bit more of a sweet aromatic note, mm -hmm. which is why Chris Morris came up with this idea of aging the bourbon a second time in new American oak barrels. And when he did that in 2011, that was the first time in, uh, in bourbon that it was ever done. Aging it twice in new barrels. So he's always been uh, on the forefront. He's always been an innovator, but uh, yeah, let's give this a try. Smart guy. Oh, man, that's pleasant. Yeah, and you get those kind of like sweet aromatics right at the front of your tongue, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I talked about being out of balance. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it was designed to have a certain finish or a certain um, highlight a certain flavor a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's what the double oak is. It's the same mash bill as our Kentucky Straight Bourbon. So it is 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. So yeah, just one additional year aged in the new American Oak Barrel that's been heavily charred. Nice, nice. And all of our whiskeys moving forward, they're all bottled at the same proof, 90.4 proof. Okay. And all of them are aged anywhere from five or seven years, with the exception of that one extra year for, for the double oak. Okay. Nice, nice. Well, so far, everything's been tasting very well. We have three more to go. Let's, let's get into it. Okay, so we have the third option. Is. That is our Woodford Reserve Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. So this expression came out, I'm going to say right around like 2015. Now, when Chris Morris wanted to create a rye whiskey, he actually found an old pre-prohibition recipe that consisted of what, na what nowadays is probably considered a low rye content, even though it's more than 51% rye, which mm -hmm. has to be the minimum for it to be a rye whiskey. You know, you have a lot of these contemporary ryes that are 
95% rye, some of them are 100% rye. Well, this one here is 53% rye, 33% corn, and thank you, 14% malted barley. And back during uh, pre-prohibition, that was the standard way of making rye whiskeys for a number of reasons. Uh, one, even to this day, rye doesn't grow very well in the United States. Mm. So, you know, you usually get your rye shipped in from uh, either Canada or like Eastern Europe um, because it doesn't grow that well in the United States. Is there a reason why, like wind or? Um, that, I don't know. I'm not that well good in, in, into science. So we'll get you an answer. Um, I just know that it doesn't grow well. Okay. Um, but, and also, if it were to have a higher rye content, it would cost more, meaning we would have to raise the price more on it. So, okay. we wanted to keep all of our uh, expressions pretty much line price, uh, with the exception of the double load simple because there's more yeah. labor that goes into it. But yeah, so this is a traditional Kentucky straight rye whiskey. Okay, now yeah, this is a little different. So like you said, very smooth, very angled. This one, I think the sweetness of it comes out a little more. Yeah. And then this one, hmm. What is that? It tastes oaky. Like definitely oaky and also I feel that um, the rye brings up a little brings out a little bit more of like that spice characteristic. Yes. So even though there's only 53% rye in there, as opposed to, you know, the, the other whiskeys that I mentioned that are extremely higher, mm -hmm. you still can taste the spice in there, right? Yeah, yeah. So more rye doesn't necessarily mean more spice. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of it has to do also with like our proprietary yeast that we use. Uh, we do a longer fermentation than, than the standard industry ferment, fermenting process. Um, okay. Our distilling, we distill all of our whiskeys in copper pot stills as well. So. All of that plays into plays a role into the final finish uh, of the product. So, so Beautiful. yeah, this is our Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey. Okay, great, great. Got two more to go. Let's do it. All right. Mm. I agree, man. This is this is interesting. I usually go for this one because it's like the straight one. Mm -hmm. um, now these three, I'm curious about. Um, uh, cause you know, I've, of course I've had them, but I like now experiencing them from a different angle, yeah. like it makes you appreciate it. Like why you guys went that direction. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, there's a lot of, um, great whiskeys out there these days. Right. But yeah. also something that plays a role into, you know, having an affinity to a certain whiskey mm -hmm. is the, the production, the, the history behind it. Right. And I also wanted to talk about since uh, 1999, so three years after we first launched uh, the Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, mm -hmm. we have been the official bourbon and presenting sponsor of the Kentucky Dirt. Yes. So, you know, every time you have a mint julep, it should, it should be made with Woodford. Okay. And you should have it year round. You just, you don't have to have it just on that uh, derby weekend. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, we, we've been the presenting sponsor and official bourbon since 1999, which is really cool. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Uh, yet to go on myself, but um, I mean, of course, I've seen it, and uh, my mom went to, to Kentucky, so you know, oh, it's God. definitely uh, part of the heritage. But we'd like to go one day, yeah, you know? absolutely. And to kind of like backtrack a little bit when I talked about um, rye not growing well in the U.S., mm -hmm. so we actually have partnered with the University of Kentucky School of Agriculture, UK Big Blue, to develop a like Kentucky strain rye. Nice. Uh, yeah. so, okay. I mean, that's in the works. Okay. Uh, you know, again, I'm not an agriculture major, so I don't know. That's like, <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's move on to the um, fourth expression, which is our Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey. Now, this one is still relatively new to the market. It released. It was released uh, right around. I'm gonna say 2018. Now, for those of you that might be thinking that this is a single malt whiskey, it is not. Not to be confused with, you know, like a, like a scotch style whiskey. It is a malt whiskey, meaning that the majority of the grain, at least 51%, has to be barley, right? 
That's an interesting one because I, when I hear malt, you know, you don't want to think malt liquor, which mm -hmm. is usually like like poor content. But what, what would you, how would you describe, I guess, malt? Like, well, malt is the process of taking the barley and adding moisture and heat to it mm -hmm. to create a certain flavor profile. So essentially what you're doing when you're malting the barley is you're tricking it into thinking that it's still living to get a certain flavor profile out of it. So yeah, it's extremely interesting. So, you know, when we talk about um, single malts, that has to be 100% malted barley. Like okay. that's one of the regulations. With our Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey, it is 51% malted barley, 47% corn, and just 2% rye. Okay, hmm? just a little rye. Now with this one, I think that depending on how far along you are in your whiskey journey, mm -hmm. let's say for example, you don't like scotch, right? I definitely feel like this could be a gateway for you to kind of like start exploring more towards the 100% malted barley whiskeys out there because it does have, in my opinion, um, some like bready, yeasty qualities yeah. to it, right? Yeah. That you will find in like those styles of scotches, you know? mainly, mainly from Scotland or, or even Japan. They also have very similar style of making whiskey. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. You are right. Yeah. You do taste that, that bready, weedy mm -hmm. taste. But, but it's not overpowering, right? Like, yeah. again, if you are not into this style of whiskey, it's definitely there, but it's not offensive, right? It's mm -hmm. not as aggressive as you might think when you think of like other styles of, of actual single malts. Yeah, no, this is nice. Every, honestly, everything uh, so far has been like a ease process. You know, the smooth part is like, it's, you don't drink it, it's like, Yes. Right. It's, it's pleasant. Mm -hmm. you and know? you know, it's still high in alcohol content. It's 90 proof, you know? So like the, the, the alcohol content is there, but again, mm -hmm. just the process of the fermentation and the, the water source, you know, that's key to, to Kentucky. It filters through limestone rocks. So it removes a lot of like those impurities and it brings with it some rich minerality mm. that adds to the final flavor profile of, of any spirit that's made in, in that area. Nice, nice. Okay, so we got our final product. Um, let's go into it. Okay, so this one here is our newest expression. Okay. It is our Kentucky Straight Wheat Whiskey. Wheat Whiskey. Yes. So we launched this right around 2020, which was not, you know, the best year to um, buy a <laughs> product. So, so a lot of people are not familiar with this one yet. and. I want people to be familiar with it because as we'll taste and you know go over the, the, the flavor characteristics of it, I, I hear a lot of people talk about uh, whiskey is a spirit to be mainly consumed in like the cooler climates, right? Like during the fall, festive seasons, yeah. winter seasons. Uh, but I feel that with this one particularly, the wheat really brings out some really nice fruit characteristics mm -hmm. where like you can enjoy a Kentucky straight uh, wheat whiskey sour out in the patio in our 80 degree weather and still find it very pleasurable. Mm. It does have a very, um, a more sweeter like profile versus the other mm -hmm. one. So with this one, so you mentioned it came out 2020, where we all kind of know what we were doing in 2020, right? Yeah. Well, just not doing anything. Yeah. Um, you guys were kind of blending this up. So this this is young. This is a this is a baby. Yeah. Um, like I said, you know, a lot of people are not familiar with it, and I want to get people to be aware of it because, again, uh, a lot of people won't necessarily touch whiskey during the summer season, right? Yeah. So I think like this one would definitely be something that you can enjoy even if you're outside in, in you know, hot weather, so. Okay. Well, and then with this one, baby, once we launch this one, you know, so as we know, bourbon mm -hmm. has to be majority corn, right? So it's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. And then we have our Kentucky straight rye whiskey. 
Kentucky Straight Malt Whiskey and Kentucky Straight Wheat Whiskey. When we launched the Straight Wheat Whiskey, we became the first distillery to have straight whiskeys in all of the original four grains that were used to make uh, whiskey. So, you know, our first four expressions are made out of three grains, corn, rye, and malted barley mm -hmm. in different proportions. With our wheat whiskey, we still have those three plus the wheat. Mm -hmm. So it's 52% wheat, 20% corn, 20% malted barley, and 8% rye. Mm. So yeah, we became the first distillery to have the, the straight whiskey category in each of the, uh, the original grains. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay, you ready to get into it? Yeah, let's do it. Ooh, that's nice. I agree. Yeah, definitely, even, I think, even more approachable than our straight bourbon, uh, simply yeah. because it does have a little bit more of that fruit characteristic that people might, you know, I mean, you can still tell it's whiskey. We're not definitely trying to hide yeah. the fact that it's whiskey, but you can definitely find it a little bit easier to consume if you're not into whiskeys at the moment, for sure. Interesting. So this would be like a recommended for um, mixed drinks, maybe like a sweeter on a sweeter profile? Um, definitely more fruit driven, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I've had this with um, just like lemon juice and sparkling wine before, right? Mm -hmm. So definitely a nice little sipper. You still get those nice uh, wood notes out of it, but it definitely highlights a little bit more of like a fruitiness to it. Nice, nice, nice. So sir, so you mentioned straight whiskey. What, yeah. what does that mean exactly? So straight whiskey is an actual category. So, you know, let's go back to, to bourbon. Um, just okay. kind of want to go over uh, whiskey 101, bourbon 101. So, you know, bourbon, has its own regulations. Uh, it can only be made in the United States. So 90 plus percent of all bourbon comes out of Kentucky, mm -hmm. but it can be made anywhere in the United States. We have distilleries here in Chicago that make bourbon. It's, it's legally bourbon. There's no, uh, it's not real bourbon. No, it is real bourbon. Like, <laughs> but 90% of it comes from Kentucky. As I mentioned, the water source really does play a role in, into the flavor profile. Uh, it has to be at least 51% corn in the mash bill. Okay. And it has to be aged in new American oak uh, charred barrels. Those are the three main ones. We can get into the other things as far as like, it has to be distilled uh, no higher than 165 proof. It cannot enter the barrel at higher than 125 proof. And it has to be bottled at a minimum of 80 proof. Mm. Okay. So that's bourbon. And for rye, malted whiskey, and wheat whiskey, same definition, same regulations, except for the grain, right? Rye has to be at least 51% rye. Uh, malt has to be at least 51% barley, and then wheat at least 51% wheat. Now, when you get into the straight whiskey category, it's a little tricky because in order for you to have a bourbon, mm -hmm. you don't have to age it for a certain amount of time. You can literally pour the liquid into a barrel empty it out five minutes later, and it's legally bourbon. As long as it comes into contact with wood, that's where you can classify as bourbon or, or any other whiskey category. Now, when you get into the straight whiskey category, there are regulations. It has to be aged for a minimum of two years in that oak barrel, right? And now here's, here's where it gets even trickier. Oh boy. If it's aged for less than four years, it has to stay it stated somewhere on the bottle. So if you look at all of our bottles anywhere, there is no age statement. So you are guaranteed a whiskey that has been aged for a minimum of four years. You know, I mentioned that all of our whiskeys are aged anywhere from five to seven years. Yeah. But yeah, that's where the, the straight whiskey um, category comes into play. Now, since that one is this one, mm -hmm. 2000, Mm -hmm. But we've been aging this for a while. Got it. So, Got it. you know, we started aging this probably half a half a decade ago. And then um, but we just released out. it in gotcha. 2020. Yeah. It's so funny how it works. Like it's like you guys got this secret project that you're working on and then it gets released. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. I'm learning something every day, guys. So all right, thank you so much, Sergio, for coming. Thank you guys for viewing this, this video. Um, man, I always like 
learning new things. And of course, man, my favorite brand, like I love it. I'm so excited to have yeah. one here. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for having me. And you know, I'm not gonna leave here without giving you a, a little gift. So I brought a couple of things for you. Uh, nice oh, one. really? Nice little Woodford Reserve brand, branded hat. A uh, nice little lapel pin oh, for you, you know, for when, okay. you, when you put on a, a nice suit, you know, you want to floss a little bit. put it on the night. <laughs> um, you know, you can always use a keychain. You can oh, just yes. be rolling around yes. with just single yes. keys anywhere. Ooh, and then that, something that, you know, is essential to all of us, a nice little leather uh, journal for you as Beautiful. Well. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. It's always a, a pleasure being able to talk about uh, Woodford Reserve and I hope everyone enjoys it and goes out and consumes Woodford Reserve uh, responsibly, please. We always like to make sure everyone enjoys responsibly. Got to, got to, please, please. And thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next time. Cheers. Cheers.